Peace everyone, Unmaskart here and welcome back to the Drawing Journal. It's good to be live again. I hope everybody had a fantastic weekend and it's good to be back. Um, as many of you know, I am going on vacation with my wife uh, this week. So this will be the last Drawing Journal for the month of November. Uh, tomorrow, as you might have noticed, I have scheduled a uh, part two of the uh, live pastel tutorial that I started last week. Um, so I'll be streaming tomorrow. Tomorrow will be my last stream for this month. And then I finally get to uh, take some time off and relax, uh, go visit my family, and uh, just have a good time. Anyways, let me say hello to Paulo, Donnie, Pumpkin Spice, Diane, Anne, CC, uh, Draw Art Lab, Sneaks, Yasem, uh, and Jesse, thank you all so much for uh, coming by and um, hanging out with me today. Uh, so today's title is What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. And this is, this is something that I struggle with a lot because when I'm doing, when I'm setting up these drawing journals and all of my other live streams where I just kind of like hang out and work on something semi-random uh i i often struggle with like i i even ask my wife sometimes like i don't know what i'm going to do it's always over the weekend too um that i'm like stressing about this because i'm sitting there i'm like man i want to do something i want to do something compelling to bring viewers in i want to do something that uh gives me the opportunity to to teach something or just discover something or experiment and i always try i always try to like outdo myself from all of my previous streams and and I think that it's an unnecessary uh, amount of pressure that I put on myself so uh, I decided to just do what whatever and instead of instead of worrying about all of those other things I just kind of I just kind of thought to myself okay what is it that I want to do like what is something that you know maybe I struggle with artistically or I'm, I'm afraid to attempt um, just or something I haven't tried and that's actually quite easy because I've been wanting I've been wanting to do a pastel portrait for uh, for some time I've done I, I've, I've done a couple like a small ones that weren't like full-scale portraits and so today I am just I have my I have my Carbothello pencils here. I'm working on pastel mat. Uh, this is a, just a random piece of gray toned pastel mat that I had in my drawer. So I didn't I didn't choose gray for any particular reason other than the fact that I just I had it in my drawer. And uh, I'm just gonna start coloring in this portrait. Uh, you can see some of the lines here, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. So my my greatest um, piece of it, advice when it comes to dealing with those moments where you want to do something but you don't know what to do it is to just do anything it, don't don't stress about what it is that you're going to do just just do something and i've been wanting to do a portrait uh with pastels for some time and so today that's that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to just uh, get my colors here really quick. Let's see, I think uh, I'm going to start, uh, no you know what, I'm going to start with this eye. Actually no, I'm, I'm going to start with this eye. I think it's just better to start from the left since I'll be kind of working to the right. Hello, Tommy, uh, Catrice, uh, Barbara, Nunez, Crystal, and Brenda. Good to see everybody. Oh, you're gonna draw something while you're watching? That's awesome. You have to let me know what you're what you're gonna draw. All right, I need kind of a bluish gray. I think that's uh, that's gonna do it. And I'm just gonna start with the Seclira, like I always do. and just try to do a portrait you know i've been i've been talking a lot about my my coloring strategy and and uh my patreon tutorials 
and we've been working through a new strategy where instead of focusing on anything like the subject, we're focusing on the color and the shape. And uh, I know some of my patron students uh, probably watching this right now uh, probably are tired of hearing about it, but that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to ignore the fact that I'm working on a portrait and I'm just going to focus on the color and the shapes. <laughs> by, the, by the end of the stream, I want everybody to be uh, repeating after me color and the shape. Like that is, that is what I'm going to focus on. <laughs> Uh, you're inking stuff, redoing a clover piece. Oh, that's cool. Anybody else working on something uh, exciting today? Trying something new, perhaps? Oh, hello, Lily. And congratulations, by the way, for winning the uh, coloring competition. Uh, that's something that I wanted to mention really quick. I, I, uh, if if you entered the coloring competition, uh, everybody wins a print. Uh, I had one. Uh, I don't have one now. It's sitting over there. I don't want to go grab it. Um, I have all the prints, and I have all of it packaged up here. Uh, all I need is your address to send the print. Uh, so make sure you do that. I've gotten, I think, six or seven of the 12. So if you uh, entered the competition, just know that you did win a print, even if you didn't get first, second, or third. Um, and Lily, I also sent you an email. Uh, I'm not sure if I got a response yet. Doesn't look like I got a response, but um, uh, check your spam folder. Maybe it maybe it went in the spam folder because I haven't heard back from you yet and you're here on the live stream so at least I got a chance to to uh, ask you in person if you got the if you got my email uh, I'm gonna use the pencil blender here the stump to do the blending Oh, hello, Bonnie and Ginger. I've been, before the live stream, I was trying to sharpen as many of my pencils here as I could uh, so that I don't have to do it on the stream. Uh, but I haven't had much luck. Uh, I've tried a few different sharpeners for the pencil, and oddly enough, I've kind of been enjoying the. Uh, the, this little twisty one that comes in the full set of the Carbothello pencils. Now if you don't push too hard, it, it tends to work pretty good. At least at clearing the wood so you can get somewhat of a, a clean tip. And then you can use your sandpaper. Okay, Lily. All right. Well, um, I leave. I leave technically tomorrow evening. Um, so, I, I want to try to get all of the prizes and things mailed out before I leave because you know it'd be a long wait. Otherwise. Um, and it's unfortunate that it's a holiday uh, today, and yesterday was a holiday. So getting uh, getting the prizes and everything mailed out today is not possible, unfortunately. 
but tomorrow I should be able to and hopefully I can get all of that taken care of tomorrow I have just I have so much stuff that I have to do uh, tomorrow it's kind of kind of tough uh, but I hope I can get it all done before I leave because I, I, I don't I don't want people waiting for too long because sometimes it can take a while for my packages to show up uh, and yeah I'd, I'd prefer that not to be the case now I need a little bit of green uh, I'm going to be coloring in some of my Inktober bunnies oh that's cool Diane yeah I really like your bunnies that you did throughout Inktober I think that's a good that's a good subject for you to color. That'd be a good subject for anybody to color. Oh, hello, Gihan. Uh, is it possible to zoom in a bit on the eye you're working on so I can see it more clearly? Um, I can zoom in a little bit. I don't want to zoom in too much because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing this for fun, but I'm more than happy to zoom in a little bit. Uh, I'm not really going over specifics for a tutorial because uh, as I explained like the the topic of today's drawing journal is just you know what to do when you don't know what to do and I am doing just that uh, I and it's just um, I chose something that I've been wanting to try for some time I've really wanted to to try out um, a pastel portrait and I'm just kind of working up the nerve to do it it's probably not the the best idea to to do it live uh, since I haven't really done a pastel portrait before and I'm just kind of going I'm just swinging for the fence here with the with this so hopefully uh, it turns out decent I don't have any goals for getting this done today that would be that would be a little uh, a little absurd I think impractical to, to think I could get it done today, but uh, I do want to get some of it done at least. See how far I can get. Uh, I have had trouble drawing eyes recently. They are supposed to look straight ahead, but look as if they are looking to the side. Um, well, when you're when you're sketching out your eye, focus more on the positioning of the pupil as opposed to the positioning of the iris itself. That would be that would be the uh, the advice that I, I could give you when it comes to doing eyes, because they can be they can be a, a tricky subject sometimes. Getting them getting them to look right, you know, can be a challenge. It just takes a bit of practice, a bit of patience, and the other thing is like, oftentimes, uh, if you're doing more like realistic eyes. I noticed that there's a, a very common mistake in the separation from the the eyeball itself and the eyelids. Usually there's too harsh of a line separating those 
And then the other thing is the thickness of the eyelid itself is often forgotten. And so you just want to make sure that um, you create those, there's two lines. So there's the line that separates the actual eyelid from the eyeball, and then there's a gap there, very thin gap that is the thickness of the eyelid itself that you want to make sure that you get uh, correct also. That way uh, the eye looks three-dimensional. Uh, the other really common mistake that people make in eyes is that they don't color the seclera, which is the white part of the eye. They never color it dark enough. It's always way too white. Um, and I can assure you that if you just go darker with your secleras, your eyes are already going to look better than they normally do. So just keep that in mind because uh, it's a very, very common mistake that I see over and over and over again. I, I, I see it so often that uh, I could probably never stop saying it because it is most likely a mistake that uh, at least one of you in the in the live stream right now is making. <coughs> uh, and if you guys have any other questions, you know me, I love questions and I never get enough of them. So if you're new to the chat or you know you're not new to the chat, you can you can ask me all the questions that you want because I love answering questions. The way that I'm approaching this eye right now, as you might be able to tell, is that I am only drawing on the eyeball itself. I'm not doing anything with the eyelids or anything like that. I'll show you what uh, I plan to do after, but that is that is one, uh, one thing that I do regardless if I'm painting or I'm using colored pencils or I'm doing pastels here. Uh, I always, always, always work on the inside first uh, because I can draw the exact shape the eye is supposed to be without having any concerns about the skin or anything around it. So I just, I find that to be easier, an, an easier process. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, I will, uh, I will send you the PayPal amount, uh, Lily. Thank you for the email back. Uh, I'll send you that uh, after the stream, and then you can order whatever art supplies you want. How clean is the blending stump? Oh, where is it? Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Um, it, it's stained. It's not very clean. Uh, I'm using dark colors, to be honest with you. The colors I'm using are quite dark, so I haven't cleaned it. Yeah, the blending stump. Uh, I will clean it, I will clean it if I am using like really light colors and I'm switching back and forth. Usually what I do is I'll just use an X-Acto knife and, and clean it on both sides. And then for whatever I'm working on, one side will be for dark colors and the other side will be for like white and really light colors. That's usually what I do. All right, time to get into the skin here. I'm going to... Use a bit of this, I think. Mm, that looks a little bit too dark. Uh, maybe I'll just use a light pink for a base color. So right around, this is going to be the eyelid part 
right underneath the eye. I'm trying to keep this in the camera. This is why I didn't like, I didn't initially zoom in because I was worried that uh, I would be out of frame with my picture. Uh, this is going to be that gap that I was talking about where you have uh, between the, the thickness of the lower eyelid. That's what this, this line here is going to be. A little bit too dark. Maybe I can blend it out a little bit. Uh, I never knew how to clean the stumps. That was a very good advice using a knife. Oh yeah, you just use um, I just use a craft knife and, and sharpen it like a pencil. Uh, you can buy pastel mat just about anywhere. You can get it on Amazon. You can buy pastel mat on Amazon. Looking for like a, a red brown. This might not be quite what I'm looking for, but might be close enough. Uh, no, that's too it's too light. Try darker. You can't get it where you live. Brenda, don't you live in the United States? Uh, you got some 400 grit sandpaper. Uh, yeah, the, the, the sandpaper is a little, a little tough on the fingers if you use that to blend. It's, I mean, it's even tough on the sponges, you know, they don't last as long if you, uh, if you're using the sponges to blend with, so. Yes, but not in West Virginia. Um, uh, you could probably check some other online art stores that they probably sell pastel mat. I can't imagine why they wouldn't ship to you.
I'm going to do all this skin around this eye before moving on. And like I said, I'm focusing on the shape and the color. And you're going to be saying that by the end of this stream. I'm going to get all of you on, on board saying the shape and the color. Because that is, what, that is what I'm focusing on. I'm not, even, I'm not even really paying attention to the fact that I'm coloring skin or... anything that has to do with an eye. I have this very clear shape and I'm just trying to match the color the best that I can with the colors that I have. And then I'll blend it out and that will give me a Give me the right shade, hopefully, if I mix my colors properly. Shape and color, yep, you're absolutely right. I'll be saying that all stream. Uh, what kind of pastel pencils am I using? I am using the uh, Carbothello pastel pencils. drawn a face not starting with the eyes is it possible to start drawing to start drawing differently um, I, I'm trying to think have I started I don't think I have I don't think so uh, anytime I anytime I draw a person I always start with the eyes and I do that because the eyes are 99.9% .9 of the time, the eyes are the focal point of any portrait, which means that they should get the most amount of attention. And so getting the placement and the getting the placement of the eyes along with the expression of the eyes is far more important in my opinion than matching anything else in the in the reference photo so i tend to just do start with the eyes because they're i feel they're the most important and uh, and then i move on from there uh, i the the eyes ground the portrait and they're the most fun to work on in my opinion i love doing eyes so i i just tend to uh to start with them always I don't think I've ever started with anything other than the eyes. And I don't see any reason to change that. Like, I don't have, um, there's, there's no, uh, there's nothing that indicates there is a benefit to starting anywhere else with a portrait. And until I accidentally discover one, then there, I probably won't change my process. Um, I think I think I can do portraits quite well, and I'm satisfied with the outcome of most of my portraits. Um, so I think I'm just going to keep keep on doing uh, portraits the way that I that I already do them. Uh, 
how do you choose whether to do a drawing with colored pencils or pastel pencils? Uh, is it just the mood you're in and the subject? No, uh, it's really, I've done a lot of portraits with colored pencils and I've always wanted to try a portrait with the pastels, uh, which is why I'm doing it. Uh, I don't tend to choose my subject based on what it is I'm doing or anything like that. Uh, I just like to try out different mediums. Uh, pastels are a lot of fun to use. They're quick and they're just fun. Uh, so I, I just switch back and forth based on arbitrary things, I guess. Nothing, nothing very obvious. So there's there's no there's no like uh, clear reason why I choose one medium over the other or anything like that. It's just that uh, yeah I like to switch it up as much as I can, and pastels are just fun to use. Oh thank you, Lily. Yeah, I've always, I always felt like my, my portraits lacked a little character, but uh, I still enjoy doing them. And hopefully you guys don't lose, uh, lose interest in me uh, doing my portraits. a little bit more pink I think in my in my makeup here Yes, I, I really, really enjoy doing portraits. They're one of my favorite subjects. Portraits and figures. Those are, those are my favorites. I just like the expression and I, I really enjoy doing people because I just find it to be the most difficult of subjects. Of all the subjects that I've drawn and painted and colored and all of that, I always go back to uh, to portraits and figures as, as being the most difficult that I that I come across and um, I just I, I find more enjoyment out of the subjects that I feel are more difficult in comparison to something like um, animal portraits I don't feel like I struggle too much with the animal portraits and I I feel like uh, creating creating like the the realistic animal portraits I find just somewhat boring because I find them to be easy they're just one of those subjects that uh, I just don't find very difficult to do uh, not nearly as difficult as I find portraits Portraits always tend to be a challenge, whereas animal portraits almost never tend to be a challenge. But I always have to change it up so you guys don't get bored with the content. <laughs> so I don't, I don't just focus on one, one thing. That's probably something else that, uh, that I just can't help is that I always have to be trying something different. Um, and I, I don't really focus on one particular kind of subject. I'm always a little all over the place with my subject choices. 
because it's just more fun for me. Uh, I'm working on like a, a dark gray pastel matte paper. That's the paper I'm using today. Um, your portraits are amazing. Do you ever draw average looking people rather than the hotties? Uh, sometimes they are they have more character <laughs> well, I um, I feel like I did a, a graphite portrait of just a normal looking guy. I mean uh, It's it's hard to say uh, I I just draw what I find compelling and oftentimes I'm choosing my reference photos accordingly like if I find it like a compelling photograph then it doesn't matter who who or what the picture looks like it's just if the photograph is compelling enough um, I, I draw that but I, I give what you mean I do tend to draw um, people that I find attractive because it's just, it's a little bit easier for me to look at, I guess. It might be easy to draw a cat, but a certain cat. Isn't that much more difficult? Um, no, like that's, that's the thing. I, I don't find difficulty in it. Um, when I, when I do pet portraits and, and whatnot, I just don't struggle. I just, uh, you know, I take my time. I use the, I use the techniques that I learn or what that I teach. I mean, uh, the techniques that I teach all my students, uh, I just use those techniques and it's, it's kind of, I, I suppose it's partially my fault because of the way I break things down. I break down my art subjects into a kind of algorithm, algorithmic uh, processes in the sense that, you know, when I draw, you know, when I draw, think of it very simple. If I draw a square, it's like always starting with the same edge. So uh, I, I, I draw a square starting with the same edge every time and the way that I break down the subject means I always draw the next edge next and when it comes to drawing people I always start with the eyes in particular the cicleras and then I go with the skin around the eyes and then I go with the eyebrows, and then I go with the nose, and then I go with the lips, and then I go with the cheeks and the jawline, uh, and then I go with the neck, depending on the, the positioning or the hair. And uh, when, I, when it comes to animals, when it comes to animals, it's very similar in the way that I break them down. It's, I start with the eyes, I start with the fur around the eyes, or I'll start with the, I'll start with the nose, depending on the animal. Obviously, like if it's a dog, a good example would be the, the project we're working on on Patreon right now is this dog here. Started with the eyes, the nose, or actually we started with the tongue because I wanted to get those colors out and done out of the way. But this is not all dogs have their tongues out, so I start with the tongue, then the eyes, the nose. And then it's just the hair. Started with the hair around the eyes, the snout here, top of the head, and then the ears. So I always break it down in like digestible bits that I don't I don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about because I've already done enough of the drawings to 
to go from point A to point B, and then from point B to point C, and then so forth. Um, and so this kind of this kind of algorithmic m approach that I have to art simplifies otherwise complex subjects in a in a way that uh, it leaves some of them rather boring for me to repeat over and over again. And animals just tends to be extremely repetitive. And it's it's somewhat of a product of their fur in, in, in most senses, because I could teach a million different fur tutorials, but they all boil down to the same exact thing. And it's the same exact thing over and over again. The only thing that changes is the amount of time that you need to put in to create, you know, maybe the texture of the fur or the color of the fur. But in the end, it's it's all pretty much the same, and it and it just gets um, a bit repetitive for me. Uh, it sounds amazingly easy with the squares, especially I need that for the dog portrait. <laughs> I have a request for drawing a, do a friend's dog. Uh, thank you for all the good advice. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I um, try to try to help you out as as much as I can. You know, I I have this I have this philosophy that um, when it comes to my art, you know, if you guys want to know how I do something. I share it in its most explicit detail. Um, I don't think that I don't think that technique should be a secret among among artists. Um, so I I am completely open as much as I can about my process and everything that I do, so that you guys can progress in your own artistic way. So I'm happy to answer as much questions uh, regarding techniques and process as I can to help you guys out as much as possible. Because I don't think that anything that I do uh, artistically is is like magical in any way. It's just I find it to be very basic, uh, very straightforward. Uh, nothing. Nothing like uh, is always kind of expressed in in movies and, and things like that with some kind of weird tutti fruity kind of artistic expression. Uh, I don't I don't believe in any of that that stuff. You know, they oftentimes you'll hear people talking about like the old masters and how they had these really I don't know, almost flamboyant kind of strategic ways of, of creating art and and then I just I just don't think that's true. I I just I refuse to believe that uh, that art has to be uh, some kind of feeling like it has to be generated by a feeling first in order to be great. Uh, what about a cat with no hair? Uh, that would be that would be easier than a cat with hair. <laughs> It would, it would be easier in the sense that it'd be faster. Because you wouldn't have to deal with fur direction, fur length, 
fur color because those are like the three keys to doing fur or hair direction length color um, and that is that is the, both the uh, scale of importance uh, direction is the most important length is the second most important and color is the third most important uh, and the the reason is because if you have the perfect colors for your hair but your direction is incorrect it's not gonna look realistic at all it's gonna look choppy uh, lumpy you're gonna have a lumpy furred cat or animal uh, and then length length there is some leeway there because if you don't quite get the length right well then it just looks like the hair is a little bit too long or the hair is a little bit too short but you still have the capabilities of having it look realistic and then color if you don't have the color correct well then you just have a different colored animal it doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't look realistic it just might mean that it doesn't look exactly like you know the exact pet you might be trying to to recreate so there's there's those things but um, uh, that would be the scale of importance uh, but if you have the direction messed up it immediately does not look realistic because the direction messes with the flow the flow messes with the anatomy the anatomy messes with the believability of it being realistic so that is why uh, direction is, is going to be the most important factor I didn't even intend to go this far with this portrait here. I'm already, I'm already a bit beyond what I anticipated doing today, as far as the uh, the degree in which I was gonna get anything done with this. But I guess that's the benefit of of doing it with the pastel pencils is that I can fill in these larger spaces exceptionally fast and get more done than I anticipated. I'm going to stop there though. The eye is perfect. Well, thank you, Rob. I appreciate that. I still got some ways to go, I think. But, uh, yeah, I think it is coming together pretty, pretty nicely. The, the one thing that I'm scared to death of doing is the nose. Um, no. I think that uh, the nose is probably the hardest part of any portrait and it might be what I find to be the most difficult thing to draw just in general just of any subject anything uh, I just think the nose is my greatest weakness any of you guys have a greatest weakness what's your uh, drawing nemesis what's your drawing subject nemesis because I, I think I'd have to give it to the nose. I'm going to try to get to the nose today, uh, so I'm going to jump over to this other eye. Oh, hello, Tatiana. Got to find the right gray. This might be about right. I, 
Oh, did anybody see the new um, Bohemian Rhapsody movie? My wife and I saw that last week. Or did I mention that? I don't remember which day it was. No, it was Wednesday last week. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mentioned it on the Patreon live stream, but I didn't mention it on a drawing journal. But we went and saw that last Wednesday on our date night. It was a good movie. Um, Rami, the actor that uh, portrays Freddie Mercury, gosh, he is so good. He's so good. He's like my favorite actor. Uh, his portrayal of Freddie Mercury was just flawless. Uh, uh, fabric like lace. I hate drawing fabric. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the reason why I don't like to draw people if they are not nude. Uh, that's a that's a good that's a good reason to draw uh, the nudes. Yeah. I'll have to use that when somebody asks me why I draw naked people. <laughs> like, oh, I just don't like drawing clothes. <laughs> um, hardest part of a portrait drawing is achieving the likeness um, yeah you know that's that's what a lot of people struggle with uh, a good a good tip on generating that likeness is to establish your um, your anchor points and landmarks in the picture and I describe I describe landmarks and anchor points as being, uh, I, I've, I've described them before. What did I do? Oh, I have a, um, I have a, uh, a drawing journal that I did. I think it was earlier this year. Uh, how to draw faces from any angle, and I talk about landmarks and anchor points. Uh, like a landmark would be, like this corner of the eye, and then I would use that corner of the eye to determine like where the eyebrows at so I'd like use a vertical line and be like okay well the eyebrows just over here and then I'd use like okay here's the side of the nose if I go straight up oh look it matches with this side of the iris so I use those to to generate the landmarks and reference points for um for the portrait that I'm working on and and that helps me keep that likeness. Uh, but that is that is the key to getting the likeness, matching your anchor points and landmarks. Uh, it doesn't the scale doesn't matter. It's just matching those those key points. That is why things like caricatures. That's why caricatures work. When you when you look at a good caricature artist. And they have, um, they you know, they draw some famous person or something that that everybody recognizes, and their face is all deformed and everything. The reason they're able to capture the likeness is because they 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 match up not the anchor points, but they only match up the landmarks. So you have like certain things about the features that will be completely exaggerated, but uh, the landmarks will still line up with the face it's kind of like when you see in those like crime tv shows where like trying to match faces the computer is analyzing landmarks of the face corners of the eyes in relationship to the like the tip of the nose or corner of the eyes in relationship to the tips of the mouth or something along those lines um that's yeah, that's a fat that face mapping uh stuff I uh, love Queen music, so I'll watch the film eventually. The lead actor looks like he did an amazing job. Yes, yes, he definitely did an amazing job. Oh, hello, Chrissy. Good to see you. And Gina, good morning to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, 
that's not dark enough. I need darker gray. Here we go. I'm trying to keep my head out of the camera. It's hard when I want to get close. That's that's the one thing uh, about my drawings that I do when I'm live. When when I'm live streaming my my drawing process, I can never draw as good live as I can when I'm just you know sitting here by myself. Uh, and the reason is because you know I'm I'm really far back from my paper, and I'm like my my arm is fully outstretched, so it's really hard for me to match the tip of my pencil with where I really want it to go. <laughs> um, so that's that's something that I've had to get used to over the years of doing the live streams, uh, because otherwise you'd just see the back of my head. This would be me drawing, this would be my head, and you wouldn't be able to see anything because I normally I'd be like real close because I want to see, I want to see exactly where the tip of my pencil is touching the paper and I like to get real close. But obviously uh, not, not all that possible uh, live streaming. Oh, hello, Alex. How you work the same way uh, yeah it's not uh, it's not because you're older no I, I like to get really close to so I can uh, be more precise I thought you might like this, Chrissy. The uh, the reference photo that I grabbed just uh, it kind of kind of reminded me of the the portraits that I tend to see from you, and I know you like to do the uh, the pastel portraits. So I had to I had to grab the good old port or the good old pastel pencils and start doodling about with uh, with a portrait. I had to give it a try. So far, it's working out pretty good. do you choose the paper color? I don't. I, I this is just a, I just grabbed this piece of paper because it was a random piece of paper that I had. I don't tend to work on colored paper and I don't tend to rely on colored paper to have any lasting effect with my drawing. Um, if I do, if, if I were, if I were to put any effort into my paper color choice, um, I would think about what I would I would think about what effect I want it to make. For instance, uh, the last time that I used a paper color uh, to affect my final piece at all was when I did. Um, 
the waterfall that everybody wanted me to do for like a million years. They kept telling me to do a, a waterfall in pastels, and I finally did one. Uh, and I kept it really loose, meaning I intended the color of the paper to show through a bit. And it was for that reason, uh, it was for that reason and no other reason that I chose the paper color because it matched the color palette that I intended to use in the first place. Uh, and that is what I would use as a gauge to determine whether or not, or, or, to, deter or to determine which color of paper I would select. So if it matches my color palette, then I might consider doing it. But um, for this particular drawing here, I had no, I had nothing. Like there was no reason for me to choose this color. It was just that I had it in my pack of papers. And I figured why not, might as well. Yes, uh, when it when it comes to the eyes, when it comes to the eyes, getting them to look, getting them to pop off the page, uh, the highlights do really help. But to be completely honest with you, still, I am convinced that the more important aspect is getting the right value of the Seclira. Cannot stress that enough getting the right color of the Seclira, that white part of the eye. Getting that correct is so much more important than even getting the highlight, I think. I think it makes a bigger difference because um, the highlight, the highlight only shows up because the colors surrounding it are dark. So if, you, if your Seclira is too light, then what's going to happen is the highlights are just going to just, they're going to be dull. They're not going to be bright. So keep that in mind. That is uh, very, very important. don't have this pink color. <laughs> the eyeshadow, uh, this side of the face is very dark. The other side of the face is very not dark. And this eyeshadow color is so pink. It's so pink. It's kind of like a mix between this and that, I guess. So I'll just start with this and hope for the best. I use this color a bit on the other side of the face. Got to do a lot of color mixing here.
if you guys have any other questions for me, um, please don't hesitate to ask. I did not get enough. I didn't. I, I didn't get too many questions yet today, so keep on asking. I'm actually going to be finishing up today's stream probably after I finish the skin around this eye. So um, I won't be... I'll, I'll probably try to finish this portrait up when I get back in December uh, just to give you kind of a, an idea, give you a, an idea of where, uh, how this portrait might finish off, or when it might finish off. It will be some time from now. But uh, I'll, I'll miss you all while I'm gone for for sure. Every time, every time I I, I, I leave for for some time, I always get a little anxious because I know I'm gonna come back to like. A million notifications because when I go on vacation I don't I don't check my email I don't check my subscriber count on my channel I don't do any of that I as far as I'm concerned when I'm on vacation I don't even have a YouTube channel because sometimes you just need to uh, unplug yourself from the internet uh, and it's especially important when you're spending time with family your your family deserves better than uh, your subpar attention if you're if you're attached if you're too attached to the internet so I tend to unplug when I'm away and it, it certainly helps me uh, kind of recharge my batteries and and then be motivated when I do get when I do finally get back. Uh, who is the Boulder snowboarder? Me or CC? Uh, I'm gonna have to go with me, even though it's been several years since I've snowboarded. Uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling real good about uh, getting back on a board. I've always been a bit of a speed demon. I love just bombing hills and uh, doing jumps. I, I love doing jumps that scare me to death. Like when I do it and I go over the edge, and I I feel that that my stomach drop out. Oh, I love that feeling. Love that feeling. Uh, I invested a lot of time in a yoga portrait. I messed up the face. Should I spray with fixative and try to save it, or should I start again? Or it may be impossible for you to say. Um, well, are you doing it with pastels? You'll have to let me know what medium you're, you're using. Um, if you're using pastels, then I'm going to have to unfortunately say that you might just have to chalk it up as a learning experience it's okay to mess up it's perfectly acceptable to, to you know not have things go exactly as planned and if you really if you really feel connected to the project then then it, it's probably worth starting over um, if it's colored pencils 
if it's colored pencils, then uh, you you could try a textured fixative. Uh, you might have some luck with that, better so than than pastels. Yeah, if you're um, if you're doing it with the the colored pencils, you you might you might consider starting over. I mean, you, you, like I said, you can you could try it, but because of the the unforgivable nature that that colored pencils has, see, pastels are a lot more forgiving than colored pencil colored pencils, so. You might you have a little bit more leeway there, but with colored pencils, not so much. So you might just you know you might just want to chalk it up as a as a learning experience and then move on and try to start over and identify like bef if you're going to start it over, if you're going to take the time, if you really feel passionate about it, um, then. Uh, Identify what you did wrong. Don't just start it over for the sake of starting it over. Start it over with the intention of not making the same mistake. Uh, so identify what you did wrong and, and correct it from the beginning. Don't wait to get there again. That's what I, that's what I would suggest. Uh, subject for a live stream in the future, how to fix the most common failures. Huh. That, uh, gosh, that, that does not sound like an easy subject, Lily. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not a perfect artist. I'm not perfect. I make plenty of mistakes. Um, and I don't tend to spend the time correcting them if I mess up on something I don't I don't do it over and I don't tend to fix them uh, I just remember them forever <laughs> that's kind of what I what I find myself doing is is just remembering that okay I made this mistake uh, how can I avoid it in the future and then I just tend not to make it again uh, as far as correcting them I mean, it just depends on what it is, because it's really hard to just kind of arbitrarily make a video or cover a topic where the mistakes could be like anything, really. There's so many, there's so many things that could be considered mistakes and so many things that could just not be considered mistakes hard to differentiate between the two sometimes and you know what one person calls a mistake someone else might not so it, it, it makes a, a video subject like that um, next to impossible really at least from my perspective because what you might be referring to as a mistake um, I might not have made yet you know, it's hard to say that uh, that I could correct a mistake that I've never made. There's there's been a lot that I've made. I and I continue I continue to make a lot of them. Oh yes, you're welcome, Rob. Yeah, sometimes those small file sizes they do. Um, uh, they do make it difficult, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, you know, sometimes like the, the best pictures that I find are the ones that are just way too small, and it's like, oh, it looks so cool, but I know that, I know that if I try to replicate it, it's just not gonna look as good because the file size and you know the pictures just too pixelated and whatnot. Yeah, it can be, it can be a big letdown. That's probably, we, we probably tend to do that too much as artists. 
uh, relying on a reference photo that is just way too far gone. Sometimes that can be, you know, a, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, something that we, we do too often as artists. We just uh, try to get too much out of a photo when there's just not enough. I don't want to leave too much undone on this portrait, but I do have to get going. I have uh, I have pierogi to make. I gotta make dinner for my lovely wife. She's been itching for pierogi for a couple days now, and I keep putting it off because I have so much stuff that I have to do before I leave. So I think I'm going to try to finish up this bit of the skin uh, around the eyebrows here, in between the eyes, and uh, I'm going to call it a day. Still got plenty to do on this portrait, but uh, I do like the way the eyes have come out. Um, one of the things with uh, pastels, you know, they are really delicate. And uh, I use essentially the same technique, same approach, you know, doing, doing the cicleras, then the irises, pupils, and then the outer skin. One of the things you'll notice, at least I can hope you notice, you should notice, is that my eyes don't have any eyelashes. Uh, I am not done with the skin around the eyes. And uh, you never want to try to jump to those details too soon. If you're not satisfied with the skin around the eyes, you're not gonna magically become more satisfied if you start throwing in eyebrows, or uh, eyelashes. So uh, I'm not putting eyelashes on today. Uh, these eyes would look um, probably a million times better if, uh, if they did have eyelashes. Uh, right now they look a little empty and you know, that's for, for obvious reasons, but um, I have to avoid doing it. Uh, I don't want to jump to those details. Uh, is this the last live stream before I go on vacation? No, actually it is not. Um, I already posted tomorrow's live stream. Uh, tomorrow I'm finishing up the, uh, the pastel, the, uh, the Unison Pastel Mountain landscape that I started last Tuesday. Uh, part two will be tomorrow, so uh, you guys, you guys will have one more live stream before I go on vacation. You're so gosh darn spoiled, all of you. <laughs> no, actually, I was, I was looking forward to, to finishing that uh, that landscape anyway. So it is all good, and I hope to see, hope to see you all tomorrow. For, for that uh, tutorial. I decided to throw in this eyebrow. I didn't do any texture with it, just um, kind of the base colors to get it, get it right. All right, I'm gonna start putting my pencils away and signing off for today. Um, good, I'm glad you love it. 
Uh, can I elaborate on the hardness of the pastels? What are the hard ones? What are the soft ones? Okay, well, um, actually, I don't know. I don't use any hard pastels. I've heard of hard pastels, and I've never used them, so I don't have any. I don't have any knowledge about them. Uh, I can't tell you what benefit there is to the hard versus the soft because I've only ever used the soft in the pencils. Uh, I don't know if uh, technically the pencils are considered hard pastels. They're certainly not as soft as soft pastels. Um, I found I find them to be a little bit harder and that limits their spread in blending. Um, that's the best information that I can give you. I don't want to like start making things up just to sound smart. Um, so that's yeah that's pretty much as much information as I can give you on the difference between hard and soft. And that's pure conjecture uh, because truthfully, truthfully I, I don't know. Um, Yes, I am. Uh, I, I am happy to spoil you guys. Yes, you, you are the you are the greatest, and I appreciate you all. Uh, so that is going to be it for today. Um, I got I got it quite I got quite a bit done on this this portrait. A little bit more done than I actually anticipated, and I do like the way the eyes are coming out. Uh, I hope you guys learned something from today. I mean, the drawing journal is all about just hanging out and uh, me doing whatever I want. <laughs> since I don't get to do that very often anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for today. And I will see you all tomorrow for the live pastel tutorial. Uh, ironically, today kind of felt like a, a live pastel tutorial a little bit, but I wasn't really talking about what I was doing or, or talking you through the colors. Tomorrow we'll be finishing up that, that mountain landscape with the unison pastels. Um, so until then, uh, have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.